Hey guys, we're back with Indie Takeover. This is Chapter 30. And after Chapter 30, let's continue. He stood in the bed trying to ignore the throbbing pain that passed through my body. I tried squeezing my eyes shut and going back to sleep, but I am left with no choice but to get up and search for painkillers. And despite to despite attempt to ease the pain, I gently slipped out the rider's arm, not wanting to wake him up before I strode down the hallway and into the kitchen. I look up the medicine cabinet, which some which seems somewhat higher than it usually is. The deep breath I began my climb, my fingers gripping tightly onto this onto the smooth marble countertop. As I gently pull myself up before carefully opening the cabin door and searching for painkillers, as I search for them, in silence a faint of grunt escaped my lips in frustration. Suddenly, a deep and unexpected voice startled me f from beneath. Tell me beneath warm breath warm breath running up my leg red suits you his teeth my brows forward in confusion and I glanced down only to find that my shirt had ridden up my thighs exposing the crimson lace underwear I had on which coincidentally happened to be the ones that rather had bought me for, for my birthday I was desperate for underwear and it's not every day that rather sees me without pants on with a grunt I climbed down from the counter there feeling a little embarrassed my cheeks burning up as he stands there a shit eating grin tested all over his face it only makes me more Irritated with an effortless motion, he reaches for the bottle of painkillers before gently placing them in my hand. I, are you alright? He questioned, concern edge on his face as I turn, shaking to shaking to into the palm of my hand. I'm fine, just feeling a little sick. I brush it off, lifting the Glass to my lips and swallowing the pills, along with the gulp of water. The concern of his face doesn't leave. If anything, he grows more worried. It's my response. I head towards the couch, having a sudden need to take a seat. He follows me. I feel this behind. I call for He stays before I could even utter a word of refusal. He said really hush me with a gesture and walk away. His phone pressed against his ear. I sink further into the couch at the room, spins around me and wave for nausea. Washing over me, I'm really sick. I hate being sick, even worse, I hate vomiting. He's quick to return back to the living room, holding a blanket and other essentials in his arms. Rather, I can take care of myself, I mumble, trying to take over as he fixes the blanket over my legs. He shakes his head, batting my hands away. You're sick, I need to. I grab the blanket and drink it up to my chin. I'm not a child, writer. Apparently, being sick turns me into a bitch, but it's true. I've never been looking after myself when I'm sick. Since I was seven, my parents were never around enough to help me, so I learned that I needed and had to cure it. I'm not going to let you suffer when I know I can do something to help, so just shut up and let me do my job. He snaps, tasting the being killers in, bottle, in a bottle of water on the coffee table. I wanted to argue to tell him that I didn't need his help, but he seems pretty determined for some reason. It's probably just a fever. He has sinking into the couch at the end of the at the end of my feet. He went on to, to describe the symptoms in detail. I see a new sea flip through the channels on the TV. I stare at the side of his face and listening to anything he's saying. He starts feeling as my curiosity surfaces. What do you care so much? I suddenly interrupt his rambling. Don't you have other things to do? I, I add a taste of teasing in my tone as I look back up 
at the TV. He snickers, his eyes not even the screen. You don't, you don't get it, do you? He retorts, do you really think I care about anything but you? His eyes move, his eyes move from the screen to me. I shock a little, confused, but I don't let him see that. Okay, what about your, okay, what, what about work? You care about your work. He turns his, his eyes back to the TV again. Something suddenly grabbed his attention. The money I earn is for you. I only work for you, he says casually, as if it were a normal, innocent confession. I remain silent, somewhat surprised before deciding to simply watch whatever is on the screen. I can never really determine whether he is joking or being serious. He always just saying things to get a reaction out of me. It's a little confusing, but I just decide to ignore it regardless. As I start to lose myself in the show, I start to think about Luca. I hadn't heard from him at all lately. And when I do, it's half ass. It's half ass. Text. I don't know what has gotten into him, but everything is just so confusing and complicated. I don't know what has gotten in turned into anything. Really. Everybody go see Luca soon. It's being why I think I don't. My eyes still on the screen. I better acknowledge just me alone. It's with a low grunt. Why I d didn't anticipate a full discussion. A few sentences will be appreciated. I hate sitting here. I hate sitting here in silence. My curiosity rises to the surface yet again. And before I can stop it, the words tumble pull from my mouth. Why don't you bring girls here? I know about the whole commitment thing, but I doubt that ever stop him from doing anything else, especially since I'm with Luca. Why will he feel guilty? I never heard or seen anything around the apartment to indicate rather bringing girls back unless he's, unless he does is when he's out late for work. What does that irk me? He turns his attention to me with a confused expression on his face. Before he slowly raises his left hand and gestures toward the wedding band on his finger. I start his hand with my head slightly cocked to the side, common sense not healing as quickly. Oh, I know that he's married to me, but I never really expected him to. And but I never expected him to remain loyal. I don't really know what to say, wishing I never asked at all. Well, why? I question you don't even like me. I jokingly blurt out in an attempt to avoid an awkward moment, but I think I've just made it worse. He scoffed in, in, in response, a long silence. Then beat stretching between us before he, he is, before he eventually speaks. You're right, I don't. Thank you. He stares his waist cold and blunt before standing from the couch and heading towards the hallway. Okay, ouch. I stand from the couch. Confused and a little offended, the room spins as I follow after him, only to grow impatient and step at the end of the hallway. Don't be a dick, I call out. He erupts this step halfway to his bedroom, spinning on, spinning on his heel and pin, and pin me with an unfamiliar look. You couldn't be that uh, uh, obvious, Vinny. He snaps, his tone sharp and calling. I'm taken aback by his sudden outburst. My confusion only grows stronger. This headache isn't making matters any, any better. I don't like you, he repeats, his voice low and intense. And hands run through his hair as he breathes out in frustration. I don't even know what's the right word 
would be but it's more than obsessed and infatuated with you he means don't be so, so infatuated with you that I stay awake curving craving you craving the body I've never had so infatuated that I think about you every second of every day, distracting me from meetings and proving that my job isn't the most important thing to me anymore. He pauses, then out a chuckle in disbelief. I remain silent, standing at the other end, staring back at him. I'm so infatuated with you that the thought of of him touching you drives me up the walls. So infatuated with you that I, I so foolishly wanted to when you owe to myself that I curse the world for letting him have you first. He spits out, growing more frustrated. So yes, reading Forbes, I don't like you, he repeats for the third time. His eyes fix on mine. I quite despise you for making me so sick and painfully obsessed with you. It hurts. Both shock and confusion course to my body, leaving me speechless. I don't know what to say. Where is this even coming from? Now I don't know if it's the fever or the or that massive confession that is taking a toll on me. But I feel dizzy and nauseous. And then I don't know, I mother. I look down at my feet. Of course you don't know. You're too busy loving someone else to notice. He pinches the bridge of his nose, letting out a sigh. Don't let me hear those words come out of your mouth again, he he warns. And with that, he turns on his heel and storms off into his room, leaving me standing at the end of the hallway, my fingers nervously fiddling together. I don't know what to do, but I do know that I need to lay down. He suddenly, still full of shock, I head back to the couch, climbing underneath the blanket and closing my eyes, trying to soothe the throbbing pain in my head. When I feel my eyes getting, when I feel my eyes growing heavy, before I eventually drift off into a dreamy sleep, I suddenly get disturbed by the sound of rattling beside me, then the feeling of a warm blanket getting tucked underneath me, and then the heavy weight at the end of my feet. He came back. I woke up from a nap hours later, only need to find myself in Riley's bed again. Except he's not next to me. He must have moved me off the couch. I scanned the room for any sign of him before he, my eyes suddenly lay for my eyes suddenly land on my phone beside the pillow. The headache seems to be gone for the most part, but I still feel restless with no energy, so I decided to did to just lay down and scroll through my phone for a bit. Riley's bed is far more comfortable than mine. Riley eventually walks back into the room, but he just heads straight into the bathroom, ignoring my presence. I'm glad he doesn't seem to want to talk about it, since I still don't know what to say. I found turning. I found returning my attention to my phone. Before it suddenly dies in my hands, I grunt, turning my head to look for a charger, but only to find Riley's phone sitting on the bedside table. Only to find Riley's phone sitting on his bedside table. Later, my voice was weak as I called out, but he was enough to catch his attention. He instantly picks his head around the corner and tooth pressed dangling from the side of his from the side of his mouth along with a smudge of toothpaste. Can I use your phone? My my die, I asked, smiling innocently. Can I use your phone? My die, I asked, smiling innocently. He now in response before ducking back into the bathroom. I grab his phone. But it it only brings me to his passcode. What's the password I called out again? But instead of making an appearance, he replied with a mouthful of toothpaste from inside the bathroom. Inside the bathroom. 1511. 
Uh, the name of my organization is familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. it. I think long and hard as I type the numbers in, when I numbers in, when it suddenly hits me. The 15th November, the wedding day. Before she, before the shot could consume me, a picture of me stares back at me from his home screen. A picture of us, I should say, is a silly selfie of us we took one time. I find myself staring at the picture when he suddenly walks back into the bathroom, bringing, the, bringing me back to reality. Hey, you, knowing you're... No, knowing your paintings is here, right? He thrusts his hand over his shoulder down the hallway. I gasp, dropping the phone and climbing up the bed in excitement. I run down the hallway, scanning the room for it. My eyes, lay, my eyes land on it, hanging up on the wall in the entryway, looking every so pretty. I love it. It's easily the best thing someone's ever bought for me. Thanks for watching. And see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.